from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for joining in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I'm about to read an ad from Craigslist. Please, please do not respond to this ad. To make sure you don't, I am not going to give out the... uh, Email address. You know, they don't. You don't put your email address, but that address to respond to on Craigslist. I'm not going to read that part of it. I don't want you responding to this. It comes from the Portland, Oregon Craigslist under casual encounters, and here is the casual encounter that this person who has posted to Craigslist is uh, looking to have. That hopefully you will not give her what she wants. I'm 34. 5'8", 130. For Portland, that's downright slim. Wavy brown hair. Blue eyes. Successful. And I'm getting to that age where I want to start a family. Even if the right guy hasn't happened into my life yet. I am out of state right now and will be in town for a week at the first part of February. I've given a lot of thought to this. Some of my preferences, and that's bullet points. Age 22 to 40. Intelligent. Stocky or athletic build. Funny. Northern slash Eastern European heritage. I'm both, she says. No history of genetic disease. How can you ever verify that? Mm. Gotten a woman pregnant before. (laughs) That's a plus. God forbid she has sex with you and then doesn't conceive. Final two bullet points say... No money exchanged. No names exchanged. She says, I do not want any involvement from the man once I have conceived. I'd prefer natural conception over a few nights after work, but I'm open to other options. Would you take a Ziploc bag? Obviously, the guy must be drug and disease-free for my own safety. Please respond with a brief bio and picture if serious. Now, let me give you the pragmatic reasons not to respond to this, and then I'll go to my own personal reason not to respond. First of all, if you think this is going to be anonymous, forget it. First of all, uh, unless you go to great lengths to conceal your IP address, you are traceable. When you respond to this uh, ad on Craigslist, trust me when I tell you, there is a path that goes right back to your email address. Granted, the person placing the ad may not be smart enough to do it herself, but if she wanted to find you later on and say, I want money, she could do it. 
Don't kid yourself. That's number one. Number two, yes, no names exchanged, but you're supposed to send a bio and a picture. So let's review. You think you're going to get some easy sex for no cost, just for providing a little sperm. Meanwhile, she's got your photograph and your IP address. And if she chooses, she can find you. By the way, you've, you're going to sign over your parental rights. How is she going to get you to sign them over? She probably need your name. How is she going to verify that you are drug-free or disease-free or that you've gotten a woman pregnant before, that you have no history of genetic disease? She's going to have to know something about you. And how desperate are you to get laid if you're going to respond to an ad like this? As somebody who responds to an ad like this, has absolutely no game. You've got to be the biggest geek of the universe to think this is an appealing ad. I mean, you don't know what she looks like. There's no photograph. There's no photograph. So what I say to you is do not respond to this ad or any ad like it. The bottom line here is the person placing the ad will ultimately, if they are in need, find a way to find you, and then you will be paying. And you won't even get to see the kid or know the kid, and you'll be spending your life spending money on legal expenses or whatever it is. Why, why, why? Just to get laid? Don't you think somebody who responds to an ad like this is a loser? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. So I read you this posting on Craigslist. A woman who wants you to impregnate her. Another one of these no-strings-attached ads. Hopefully you will not respond. Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. Hey, man. Give me her info. I had a vasectomy. And let me tell you, there, there's no one who has sex like a woman who's trying to conceive. They're animals. Have you uh, done this before? Uh, I've, I've not let that be known. And I, I know I've had at least one woman try to oops me, and it just wasn't happening, and she couldn't figure out why. But, man, she was trying and trying. Really? Yeah. So you knew she was trying to get pregnant? It, yeah, just from, con you know, con she let it kind of be known, but... Let it, you know, it wasn't obvious, just trying to make it obvious, but I knew she, that's what she wanted, and uh, I, I noticed the birth control was getting a little lax, and I just said, okay, well, you know, nothing's going to happen, so. So she never it. told you I'm trying to get pregnant or help no, me have not, a baby? So, but you can you can kind of tell. I mean, their, their behavior definitely changes. You, They're definitely uh, ready for sex, uh a lot more than normally, and it's, they're very aggressive about it. And, uh, you know, she, she kind of let it be known that she would like to have a baby at some point in time and, you know, thought that I would be a great father one day. So, you know, you kind of put two and two together. Wow. I don't know. I, I, I can't imagine uh, uh, being around people like that or wanting to have sex with them. Uh, you know what? If they're not going to get pregnant, it's a great ride. Let me, I just want to give a quick uh, note of advice to, to your listeners who don't uh, have a vasectomy. Uh, if a woman tells you that she is unable to get pregnant, you better put on two condoms. Yeah, I, I believe the same thing. Uh, when a woman says she can't get pregnant, that's a guarantee she's trying to conceive. It's a guarantee. 
Absolutely. Because the number of people who cannot conceive is relatively small in the general universe compared to the number of women who say they can't conceive. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of babies around for people who can't conceive. Right. Oh, it's a, it's a miracle. My doctor said this couldn't happen. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, man, pass on that info to me because uh, I could use some fun. <laughs> Steve, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Son, how are you? Please forgive me for I have sinned. Uh-oh. I just got a girl pregnant about four months ago. Why did you do that? Oh, because I'm stupid and I wasn't listening to my pops. So you were already a listener. Oh, yeah. But They're you listening. thought you knew more than I did. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Did you? No, absolutely not. I, uh, we got involved and whatnot, and I knew she wasn't on the pill, and I didn't use any protection. And, you know, one thing led to another, a couple drunk nights, and there I was couple like a month month and a half into it saying hey i'm pregnant and uh what did you say when she said she was pregnant uh, nothing i didn't have anything to say you didn't try to get her to have an abortion no she wasn't having it she was not having it at all you and, didn't try uh, a hail mary uh there was no there, there was definitely no no room for that she listens to you too so oh boy she knew and, uh, you know, like, she, she didn't really have that great of a job. I make uh, very, very decent money, and uh, she saw it as a ride. So we went, I mean, like, we, I, you know, I just, I was being a man and uh, was trying to handle it the best that I could. But uh, she just stopped talking to me after a while. So I don't know if it was, I don't know, I don't know what it was. I really don't know. But unfortunately, she, uh she miscarried. I mean, I say unfortunately, but, you know, it's probably better in the long run. You didn't take her to the hot tub and celebrate, did you? Absolutely not. Just checking. No. no. Because when a woman gets pregnant and won't have an abortion, the worst thing to do is to take her to the hot tub and celebrate uh, or to offer her alcohol, like a bottle of champagne, let's say, to celebrate. That would be wrong to do. And I imagine the worst combination you could possibly have would be to, to invite her into the jacuzzi and give her a glass of champagne. Just yeah. as wrong as wrong could be. Yeah, so... So you you didn't um, do any of those things, did you? Negative. So you, negative. I wonder how she miscarried. Uh, it was... I, I really don't know. Maybe she was know. never pregnant in the first place. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, she was. How do you know? Because uh, we had the ultrasound. We saw it and everything. So, I mean, it was kind of a... Uh, you went for the ultrasound? What were you doing there? <laughs> hey, I was, trying to be, I was trying to be a man. Oh, you know, stop. To, stop. Oh, come on. Come on, Father. Stop. You know, you've been married four times. Yeah, like but let me tell you, when I got somebody pregnant, I wasn't there looking at the ultrasound. I, I did not want her to have an ultrasound. Yeah, that's, that's true. You were smart about it. You I know, paid I for the abortion and got it done with. I'll admit, I'll admit, I was, uh, I was definitely, definitely not thinking. But you know, I, you know, you went for the ultrasound. I mean, <laughs> you're insane. Yeah but, yeah, but you walked down the aisle four times. That's not the point. I, you know, guess what though? That's fixable. True. Okay. True. When she has the baby, there's no fixing it. That, this is very true. So but. did she? Uh, were, was she sad when she miscarried? Oh yeah. And yeah did she? A... Did she expect you to be sad? Oh, I haven't talked to her. She hasn't talked to me. So. How did you find out? Uh, her family. Her family told me about it. So. Mm. And you were yeah. talking to her family too. So you were heading down the aisle with this chick at some point, probably. Nah, no. Nah, oh yeah, nah. you were. Yeah, you. What were you doing talking to her family? Oh, just, just to get some information. You mean they had never spoken to you before? What's that now? They had never spoken to you before? They had oh, never... Yeah. Oh, yeah, they had. Oh, they had. Why were they Why were they speaking to you? Because they knew me. How did they know you? Um, Because I've been over to her house before. Why were you doing that? To take her out. You know, like when we go out, I'd go over to her house. Oh, you dated a chick who was still living at home. Yeah. That's that's a red flag right there. This is very true. 
but now uh, I'm definitely learn learned a lesson. Uh, you know, but the thing is, I taught you that lesson, and you ignored me. No, I know, I know. You know, it's like kind of kind of one of those things where you got to experience it. No, yourself. you don't. You do not have to experience it yourself. There are some times in life you just take the word of somebody who knows more than you do. Yes. Yes, Father. Because I yeah. know more than you do. Oh no! no I have more it. experience than you have. Oh, I know that. When I tell you, don't have sex without a condom. When I tell you, try to talk her into having an abortion. I'm not kidding around. Yeah, there was no, there was no talking her into it. And the reason was what religion? Um, yeah, she didn't, she didn't believe in it. Yeah, but she believes in, um, in, in stooping guys without being married to them. Yeah, she what religion also, is that? That's, that's, yeah, I know. I think she, she also said she was too old to have an abortion, but that's not, not a. How old is she? Twenty-seven. Too old to have an abortion? I, you got me too. I, I was like, you, you oh, believe that? Right? I can tell. No. Yeah, you oh, did. No. No, she just didn't want to have one. I'm too old to have an abortion. I'm already 27. Yeah, you know, and like all my friends, all my friends gave me uh, gave me a bunch of grief because I listened to you religiously on my way home every day. I listened to you, and uh, yeah, it just kind of kind of one of those things, man. But I got a, a second chance, you could say. Don't f this one up. I'm gonna try not to. Okay. All right, Tom. Hey, can you take me out, Kobe Sal? Here you go, John. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. This is Bert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Bert. Hey, uh, uh, what about a woman that's allergic to uh, latex? You know, dildos, everything. I mean, come on. I mean, rubbers. It just They're telling you, oh, I'm allergic, I'm allergic. You know, just be careful. You know what they're telling you? I know uh, what they're They're telling. allergic to work. They're allergic to paying their own bills. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Those women are never allergic to money. You ever notice that? Oh, I noticed that. I married her for about four years. <sighs> oh, boy. And uh, did she ever have kids with you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Allergic to latex. <laughs> yeah. Well, it kind of cracked me up the first time I heard it, and I was like, yeah, oh, boy. Yeah, but you... Wear, she couldn't wear latex gloves or anything like that. She'd just break out. You bought it. Oh, I bought the farm, yeah. Was she oh, also, yeah, I'm she, not going to die. Funny, they're also allergic to birth control pills, IUDs, diaphragms. Uh, concrete blocks, whatever. Yeah, they're allergic to everything. Well, yeah, I, the only thing I can really say uh, to uh, the end of this conversation, you can kick me out any way you want, is that I really do apologize uh, that my juvenile mind cannot comprehend what you're trying to convey to me in such a figurative language. Why, thank you for that, Bert. Here you go. Five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Lauren on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Question: Is it worth the money that you get paid to deal with these people? What people? These these retarded people that not that they're retarded for listening to you, but that they call in and say, "Well, I've listened to you for." whatever five years and uh, i've gotten two different women pregnant they're stealing all my money and uh you know what i mean well do you get frustrated do i get frustrated at the retards and call in well i've been talking to you for 40 seconds now and i'm doing just fine <laughs> oh i'm not retarded oh actually. you're not retarded it's the other callers who are retarded yes i see but how can you how can you immediately assume that i'm retarded well, because you said that all I get is retarded callers. Oh, come on. Well, that would mean that every caller is retarded, which would include you. All right, all right. Good point, but that's not what I meant. 
Um, okay, another question. I'm engaged and I'm 21. What do you think about that? You know what I think about that. Why do you even ask? <laughs> Do you think that no matter what, anybody at that age is doomed if they're engaged? Uh, your odds of getting divorced are way higher than if you got married later. Well, I'm going to get married later. I'm going to get married when I graduate, but I'm going to be <laughs> that's, engaged. That's, that's not later. Your perception of time is, is way different being 21 than mine is, okay? Yeah, when you graduate is when? In six months? No, in like four or five years. What are you studying? I want to do international law. Why? Because I grew up in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, and I feel like I have, I don't know, a leg up. I think I, I don't know, I think I'd be good at it. And I want to move out of this terrible country and go. Well, well you want to go to a, a country that's good for women, like uh, <laughs> Saudi Arabia? Saudi, but I was only there for two years. What other Middle but, Eastern? No, like what, what other? What other? Dubai, yeah. Yes. Okay. What? You'd like to move to Dubai? I would love to move. To and Dubai. are you are you marrying uh, somebody who is uh, also of no, your same background? No, why would my he, fiance is born and raised Texas. Why would he want to move to Dubai? He he'll move wherever I want to move. Oh, he's pussy whipped, and you're a ball no. buster. Well, yeah, kind of. But I'm good to him. I don't. I don't. Well, he has four years to realize how pussy whipped he is. So <laughs> hopefully he'll snap out of it by then. He's not pussy whipped. Of course, it, I tell you what. If he grew up in Texas and you got him to move to Dubai, he's pussy whipped. Why, Why would any man in Texas want to move to Dubai? <laughs> oh, I disagree. First of all, watching the Cowboys at three o'clock in the morning or whatever time they're on there. Well, actually, um, he's on his second tour in Iraq, and he doesn't. He watched this last game, which was a waste of time, um, at about two, three o'clock. In that's the what I'm. Yeah, but do you think he um, likes it? Do you think that's his preference? No, I do not. Yeah. Have you uh, told him of your plan to move him to Dubai? Yes, he loves it. Living in Dubai, he would like to live forever would, and say goodbye to his mom and dad no, and all his forever, cousins and aunts for, and uncles. Just for five, ten years. Oh, just that's five it. or ten years of his life. <laughs> and what's he supposed to do with his life those five or ten years? Uh, work. As what? A croupier? I don't know. As what? As a croupier? I think he just wants to teach i actually his plans are not exactly clear to me which kind of worries me but, oh um, but you know. didn't worry you enough not to get engaged did it <laughs> oh god this is pointless this is pointless but i just wanted well, to you ask for it by calling and asking me what i think of this i know i know but i know i know your answer because i listen to you all the time i just wanted to come on you at it. least went on a date with somebody while he's been out of the country you went to a no. movie or dinner or you did something no, sir. Come on. Get into a little lip lock on New Year's Eve. Oh, no. No. Mm-hmm. No. I really... If if people who do that, I, I just... I don't get it because all you have to do... If, if you're going to go cheat on someone, obviously you're not happy with him or her. So it happens in well the military all the time. Have fun. Happens in the military all the time. I know. That does, that does scare the hell out of me i mean i don't think he's like that but i also think that all guys are like that so i don't know what really how, how long do you think guys go without sex i don't know for a guy having sex is like going to the bathroom or eating it's something you do when you need to do it yeah i don't i just don't think he's like that well i, I i'm sure you also believe in peter pan no, but I do believe in Santa. In what? In Santa. Oh, in Santa. Yes. I'm sure no, you but do. Really, I, I, I think that the guys. I don't know. I think that there is a possibility, but I think that I would find out one way or another and walk out the door. So I don't know. I don't think. And why is it necessary to be engaged at such a young age? It's not. It was my birthday. He had just gotten back from his last tour and 
he proposed to me at dinner. I had no idea it was coming. We'd only been dating. And do you know months. how many guys in the military make these proposals? I know, and that's and, why. And I was does so... it have to do with love, or does it have to do with desperation and fear? Well, that's exactly why I refused. I, you know, would like to wait seven years. Why didn't you just say no? I couldn't. I told him. Oh, you I, could. I didn't. No, I said you wouldn't. I will accept this as more of a promise ring than an engagement ring. If you're not comfortable with that, then don't put it on my finger. And he was just so excited that he, you know, said that was fine. And now uh, he talks about marriage a lot, and I have to remind him that that's that's not happening anytime soon. And I think it, yeah. People in the service, God, it seems like they're all married or getting married or having children at 19, and that is that is so weird. Because these are people who don't go to college and don't have plans for their lives. Well, he went to college, but he only got his year. That means he went to community college, which is the 13th no, grade. No, he went to full sale, like a music school in Florida. But yeah, still, when he comes well, A back, trade school? Yes, yeah, a trade school. Oh, good. So let's review. <laughs> this man has no education, no future. You already admitted you don't know what he'll do for a living. So <laughs> the future is teacher, you're an attorney. You're, you're, you're studying law. Is that what you said? What? Did you say you're studying international law? International, yes. So you're in Dubai. You're an international lawyer, and he wakes up at 3 in the afternoon and does a little wake and bake. Oh, No. No, he oh. doesn't even want me to work. He doesn't want me to work. Yeah, but what he is he? But, but you don't know what he's going to do. I know because the thing I do know what he wants to do. I'm just yeah. What is that? Change. Oh, now I have to find he out. He wants to be. He wants to teach. He wants to teach what? History. What? But he doesn't have a degree in it himself. I know that. But what the, the hell does he know about history? The reason that he joined the army was so. I mean. He got really upset about the whole um, Iraq thing. That does not make him a history expert. But no, no, no. I know that. But the army will now pay his full ride in Texas to wherever he wants to go. And so when he gets back, he's going to go back to school and do what he needs to do. Which means he has to go to four years of college plus get a master's degree. I don't. If he says he can do it, I will believe him until he shows me otherwise. So you, you, what you have demonstrated in this call is how immature the two of you are. I, I don't disagree with that. And I therefore, therefore, being engaged to anybody is wrong. Yeah. But, but. I mean, you I, are, you are exhibit A. If there's anybody out there who can't see themselves clearly. All they have to do is listen to your answers to my questions to see right, that you no, are not I mature enough have... to be engaged to anyone, much just be planning to get at, married. I look at being being engaged is not like being married. At any it's, time, it's a lot like being married been... because you stop dating other people. You stop looking around. You stop growing as a person. You start How building your life you st because you start building your life around a loser who doesn't have an education, doesn't have a game plan for his life, and you stop talking to other people. Maybe there's guys who, who have their heads on straight. Maybe there's guys who have careers. Maybe there's guys who will be more successful than you. Yeah, but it's not about the money for me. I'll make my own money. As long as he makes his own money and I make my own money, it's not... Well, if you're both going to make your own money, why do you need to be married? I don't know. Ask that question to him, not me. But because... you said yes. Well, Tom, listen. I I am engaged, but at any time, if things, you know, don't go the way that I hope they will, and it's obviously, you know, futile to... Con continue on in the relationship, then it's easy to end, unlike being married and having children. But in the meantime, you are giving up your youth. You are giving up the opportunity to date various people. You're giving up your opportunity. For example, 
ever meet uh, a slightly older man, maybe somebody 30, 32 years old, who's established in his career, who takes you on a trip to Europe or takes you on a trip to Asia or takes you to Australia. You get a chance to see what the rest of the world is like. You get a chance to spend time with somebody else and see how you get along with them. You you are now you have now like locked whole... yourself out of that. I I am um, I'm not in most of the guys that I meet and that I talk to, I'm not interested in them. They are like the guys But your that point is the kind of guys you meet it does it doesn't compare because you, you, you shut yourself off by saying, Well I'm engaged, well, I'm not available So so you only meet a certain number of guys anyway. You would be surprised. How do you meet them if you're not going out? Well, I do go out. Where do I you go? go? All the time. Where do you go? I go out. Well, I just moved here from Austin. I went out with my girlfriends all the time. Where do you I went go? Out to Sixth Street. I went out. You know, not in Austin. Where do you go in Dallas? In Dallas. Well, I've only been back for what. Three weeks. Okay, so you out to Sixth Street at night with your friends in Austin, which, by the way, is the center of all the the nightlife in Austin. You were going out to clubs and stuff with your girlfriends while you're engaged. Yeah, well, that's great. You trust me, yeah, and but but the point is, I don't trust the guys at those clubs, and you shouldn't either. And here yeah, they are. He's not. Here he's they not, are chatting you up. You say, "Oh, you'd be surprised how many guys I meet." Oh, no, I, I wouldn't, because you go out to clubs at night. Like, School, you know, and also before. Oh, so when you go out to clubs with your girlfriends, no guys ever try to chat you up? They do, but I know that especially at clubs, if a guy even approaches you, he's trying to get into your. My, don't even give him the time. To Trust me, when guys approach you at school, it's the same thing. I know, but it's worse at clubs. They're more. Um, drunk. And drunk, yes. and, and So why do you go wow. to clubs if, if you're going to have that? That's what clubs are for. Well, you asked me where I went out. I, I know, know that, and now I'm asking you why you go to clubs. You're engaged. Like why do you need to go out to nightclubs? That's right. where people hook because up. All of my girlfriends are not engaged. Right, but the point is they should go out on their own when they're hooking up with people. You shouldn't be there for that. You might go to Starbucks with them, or you might go out to have dinner with them, or go to I a movie. But why would you go to a nightclub? That's where people are hooking up. The answer is because you're too immature to be engaged to anybody. You don't know what being married or being committed is all about because you shouldn't be at you should not be at nightclubs where people are hooking up. Wait, so are you telling me that when I get married that means that I can no longer have a life outside of my marriage? Yes, marriage. you can have a life. Here's the life. It doesn't involve going to Bars where people hook up, or well, nightclubs yeah, where, or nightclubs where people hook up. You can go to movies. You can go uh, to a friend's house. You can go. Uh, 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 you can go to dinner. You can go to Starbucks. You can hang out and talk to your friends all you want. Yeah, but you should not be at nightclubs. No, no, you shouldn't. No. Yeah, I agree. But, but you do it anyway. Right now, I don't agree. For I, right now, you're engaged. You just told me. I know, but it's obviously not a traditional engagement. Oh, my God. Hang on a second. Mark, what did you want to say to Lauren here? Yo, Tom, how you doing, bro? Okay. All right, good to hear. No, I think you should just be quiet. Let this dude marry this chick and then let him sue her for alimony so he can live off of her wealth for the rest of his life. Like all, see, so many, so many women have done to us men for so many years. Do That's, me for alimony? What? I don't have any money right now. But you will. You will. Okay. You're going to school for uh, to be an international lawyer, right? Right, but when that's I exactly what's going to happen. Gonna He's going to be that. sitting on the couch He's taking not. bong rips while you pay for it all. My friend, he is not. Uh, if I had your graduated. friend, he's your fiance. No, I'm talking to my friend Mark here. <laughs> oh, if uh, if if I've graduated and I've got a badass job and I'm doing really well for myself and he's not, 
I'm not going to be sitting around paying his bill. What did you say? You had four years, seven years of school left ahead of you? What? Oh, By that no, time, you already be done married, hook, line, and sinker, baby. The rate I'm going at now, four to five. Nah. All right, Tom. Do me a favor, man. Take me out with the bong rip. <laughs> there you go, Mark. <laughs> Joe on the Tom Likas show. What did you want to say to Lauren? Ah, uh, God. Tom, what's going on, sir? Not much. How's everything by you? Great. I just wanted to comment. I cannot believe this girl had the audacity to call up your show and say that your listeners are retarded with the previous statements that she just made herself. <laughs> Is she still on right now? Yes. Yes, I'm right oh, here. She, you called up the show. No offense to you, honey, or anything, but you called up the show. Right. And don't you think it's a little ridiculous? You sound a little immature yourself, and you're calling everybody else that listens to this show retarded, everybody else that calls in? Well, okay, um, maybe it is a little bit ridiculous that I'm engaged at 21, but um, it is retarded for someone to call in and say, hey, I listen to you all the time. You know, you're my favorite, you're my dad, but, uh, yo, I just got this girl pregnant, and uh, now she wants me to pay child support. And uh, I think we should contact your fiancé over there in, where is he deployed, Afghanistan? Iraq. Ar Iraq. We should call him over there and tell him that uh, you're not really his fiancé, that you're just, uh, you know, you're just kind of going along with this for now, and, uh, and that you're not his fiancé. What do you think? He knows exactly how I feel about this. Oh, does he really? And he's okay with that, is he? Yes, he loves me, and I love him. What do you think, Joe? I don't know. I, I was just a little appalled. At, and and to top it off, she asked you what you thought of her being married after she just called all the callers. I know. You no, no I had. I retarded. didn't call. I just and does the same exact thing that she called everybody retarded for. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Dumb like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. You will be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Clint on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, I just got a comment for that girl that's calling up saying she's gonna get married at twenty one. Yeah. Oh man, that's just the worst idea ever. Uh, I don't even know why she's going to do it, because if she does get married, most likely if she still looks good like five years down the road, she'll be uh, she'll be looking for another guy, you know what I mean? Well, I, I just think that, uh, first of all, you hear how committed she is to him. I yeah. told him it's not really an engagement, and I... I mean... Yeah, right. That sounds to me like five years down the road, she's going to, since she's not co really committed to him right now, how committed is she going to be five years down the road or something, you know? I agree with some, you. Some some other guy could just come along easily and just, you know, say, oh, I love you too, and then whatever. You are right about that. But that's only if she still looks good and hasn't gained gained weight, you know, from being married or whatever. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But uh, I just had to say that about that because, uh, I mean, I've just listened to the show and, and uh, personal experiences too, you know. Well, thank you for that, Clint. Uh, Maria, I've got less than a minute here. Okay. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, well, my husband's getting ready to go to Cuba for his birthday. For his birthday? Yes. That's great. What's he planning on tasting over there? Uh, I guess fried bananas. <laughs> mm. But my point is that um, I don't have a problem with him going. I don't think that because you're married, you can't go places. Oh, I agree. And I'm sure when he wants to go to Costa Rica or Panama or Cancun, <laughs> I'm sure you won't have a problem with that hey, either. Hey, I told him what goes on in Cuba stays in Cuba. Is that so? <laughs> because he says you're his daddy, but guess what? You're my daddy, too. <laughs> well, darling, since he's going to be out of town for a while, you uh, come over here. We'll do a little... Uh, a little plantain shopping. Hey, we're going to have to. Absolutely. Thank you, darling. Appreciate the call. The Tom Likas Show.